Viewer discretion is advised. August 1st, 2015, 9 o'clock a.m. It's been exactly one year since Jen left. That means it's been one year and one day since I was fired. I haven't worked since. I used to like the idea of being on disability, free money, and all the time in the world to spend with her. I guess she didn't think of it that way. She was always ambitious. I shouldn't say was. Every day I see Facebook updates detailing her constant successes. The most recent one was her engagement. I'd never seen her look so happy. I guess I knew things with us were going downhill when I looked forward to our fights. She'd always say something about how I'm so smart that I was smarter than she, in fact, but I had no ambition. It felt so good to hear that someone as brilliant as Jen thought that I was smart, even though she yelled it at me in frustration. She claimed she understood my depression and my anxiety and how they were terrible roadblocks on the path to my happiness. I thought that meant she could empathize and still wanted to be with me anyway. Apparently, I was wrong. Getting disability benefits for my depression wasn't too hard. The money isn't great, but it pays the rent and keeps me fed. The only pain is that I have to go to therapy every week. I also need to go to monthly appointments to pick up prescriptions to help combat my depression, ADHD, and anxiety. It's also procedural and detached from anything resembling real care. So, I'm a lonely, unemployed loser who apparently has this great mind that's utterly useless. But I won't stay like this forever. I've discovered something new. Well, something old, actually. Today begins my new life. The medication never worked. The therapy never worked. The behavior changes never worked. Medicine failed me. Or maybe I failed medicine. Either way, I'm taking control of myself again. I'm not going to be a victim of the barriers my body's put up for me. No more attention problems, no more depression, no more anxiety. For the first time in what may be decades, I'm filled with hope. August 1st, 2015, 3 o'clock p.m. All my tools are cleaned and ready. In about an hour, I'll start. I need to keep a pretty comprehensive journal of the procedure to make sure I'm not harming myself. I figure running an account of my experiences will give evidence of the positive or negative changes to both my mood and cognitive abilities. August 1st, 2015, 4.05 p.m. After I traced a dime-sized circle on the upper right part of my forehead, I used an X-Acto knife to carve through the skin. I wasn't prepared for how much this was going to hurt. I stopped a couple of times to wipe away the tears so I could see well enough to continue. The skin lifted off from the bone without too much trouble once I'd finished cutting. I flushed it down the toilet. Now I'm waiting for the bleeding to stop. It seems to be slowing already. It's so weird to see my skull exposed like this. I'm going to write a sentence or two before and after each of the next steps so I can get as good of a description as possible if this all works as well as I'm hoping. I opted to use a tiny drill bit over a single large one. A ring of tiny holes is going to take a hell of a lot longer, but I think the need for precision dwarfs time consumption in this case. I'm about to do the first hole. The first hole is done. Imagine the feeling of biting down on a fist-sized piece of tinfoil as hard as you possibly can while your head hums like it's filled with buzzing hornets. The vibration was so excruciating that I'm only now feeling the pain of the drill site itself. I'm going to do the next ten or so holes now, before I lose my nerve. The vibrations became less intense with each hole. The bone pain got much worse, though. I've never had migraines, but I assume that they must feel something like this. 
I'm shining a light at the ring of tiny boars and doing my best to inspect what's behind them in the mirror. It's not very useful. The remaining structural elements between the holes are extremely thin and brittle looking. I'm going to cut them away with wire cutters. I just dropped a circle of my skull into the sink. Now I'm looking at the bright red membrane that's covering my brain. I'm a little surprised by how many blood vessels are in there. I'm going to put out a couple more towels. Cutting away the membrane is the part I'm most scared of. It's done, and the hole is bleeding a lot. I'm taking extra care not to put too much pressure on the organ itself when I'm working to soak up the blood. I'm feeling a little dizzy, so while I hold the towel to the hole, I'm sitting and eating the piece of steak and drinking the orange juice I'd put out just in case this happened. The wound is slowly starting to clot while I wait here. The whole area hurts, but the pain is second to the strong pulsing sensation around the hole. It's almost like I have a second heart beating there. The blood stopped pouring out, and I'm cleaning the area with water and rubbing alcohol. Now I can see my brain. It's gray. It doesn't look like it even belongs to me. I don't know why it all feels so surreal. It's almost like I'm watching all this happen to someone else. On the plus side, I'm not dizzy anymore, but I'm exhausted. I'm going to bandage everything and go to bed. I'll clean up tomorrow. August 2nd, 2015, 6.30 a.m. I woke up this morning with more energy and drive than I've ever felt. Even sitting here writing this feels like a joy. I'm not struggling to find words. I'm not dreading how I'll reread what I've written and think it's stupid and pointless. Everything just works. The accounts I'd read about people who shared their experiences with trepanation made similar claims, but even as I drilled the holes, I never allowed myself to truly believe it would work for me. Even now, I'm worried it's all just a placebo effect. The pulsating feeling is real, though, and it's as strong as ever. That was something else my fellow Trebinan mentioned. They said it was because the body is letting the brain grow again something the skull had prevented after it hardened following infancy. I don't know if I buy the explanation, but I can't deny what's happening here. August 2nd, 2015, 2 o'clock p.m. My day's been spent cleaning the apartment. Over the last year, I'd let things pile up and grow increasingly filthy as my depression festered. Today, it's like a veil has been lifted and light is pouring over everything I lay my eyes on. The place needed to be cleaned, so I just set to work and cleaned it. It looks better now than it did when Jen and I moved in. My therapist recommended that I clean a while ago, suggesting that a nice open area would really help me see my home as a place for potential rather than stagnation. Now I know what he meant. This is what potential feels like. The hole in my head still hurts and it looks terrible, but I expected as much. If I go out, I can wear a hat and no one will notice anything amiss. I'm not ready to do that though. I'm mildly concerned about how bad the sight is beginning to itch as it heals. I'm being extremely assiduous in cleaning and caring for the wound as it heals, but I guess part of that process is the damn itch. I'm doing my best not to think about it. August 2nd, 2015, 11.30 p.m. The first full day of my experiment is about to end. I'm about to go to sleep and I feel like I've accomplished a lot today. My home is spotless. I've finished a short story I'd been working on for the last couple of months. I've gotten up to date with my internet and utility bills. And I even did a couple sets of push-ups. I had to remind myself to eat though. For whatever reason, I wasn't hungry at all until I realized it was nearly 9 p.m. and I hadn't eaten all day. I'm chalking it up to my excitement. It's been hard to contain, but now I'm all showered and pajamaed and ready to end my day. I can't wait for tomorrow. August 3rd, 2015, 5.45 a.m. I was up before my alarm this morning to watch the sunrise from the roof of the apartment. 
Last night I slept like a log and didn't wake up once. I noticed some blood on my pillow and under my fingernails though, and I think I may have scratched underneath the bandage while I slept. I made a beeline to the bathroom to inspect the hole and, thankfully, I didn't seem to do any damage. Everything appears to be healing well. August 3rd, 2015, 1.15pm I don't know if it's endorphins wearing off or just an artifact of my depression, but my euphoric feeling has diminished quite a bit since this morning. I'm thinking it might be both. Maybe I need to have a good meal. There should be something in the fridge. August 3rd, 2015, 9 o'clock p.m. Whatever I felt this afternoon doesn't seem to have been a fluke. While my mood elevated for a little while after lunch, I was back to near baseline for the rest of the day and evening. The pulsing in the hole waxes and wanes with my mood, interesting enough. When I'm happy and ambitious, it pulses a lot. When I'm depressed, it may pulse every 10 seconds. It may have something to do with my blood pressure, so I'll keep an eye on that. Before bed, I'll do some jumping jacks and see if the pulsing returns. I am fairly certain a higher pulse rate correlates with a better mindset. Just did the exercise. The pulsing is the same. My heart rate is up, but my mood is still low. I'm going to bed. August 4th, 2015, 11 o'clock a.m. I just woke up and I feel terrible. I was scratching the hole again. My pillow is soaked with blood and there are remnants of scabs under my fingernails. Tonight, I'll wear gloves. That aside, my mood is still right where it was before I started this process. I'm worried the surface area of my brain that's exposed isn't large enough to allow long-lasting effects. I don't trust myself to widen the hole that's already there, but I'm prepared to do another one an inch or so away. August 4th, 2015, 12.30 p.m. There was a problem with the second hole. I did everything just like the last time, but on the last tiny borehole, a crack formed in the skull between the original hole and the new site. I had to peel back the skin I'd left to make sure, but it was definitely there. I was forced to decide whether or not I should leave the broken piece and I opted against it. Now I have an oval that's about 3 inches long and 1 inch wide. Removing the membrane from this part was difficult and I had a minor issue with the blade slipping deeper than I wanted. Thankfully, the brain has no pain receptors. It couldn't have gone more than half an inch inside and nothing weird happened to my body so I lucked out and hit part of the 90% they say we don't use. I know people are saying that's a myth, but with what just happened to me, there must be some truth to it. August 5th, 2015, 8 o'clock AM. No scratching overnight. The pulsing is there, but it's nowhere near as strong as it was the first time. My mood is still low. I have to be honest with myself here. I feel like a failure. This whole experiment is another example of me setting out to do something with good intentions and having it all blow up in my face. But, but, I'm not going to be defeated by it. In the past, I would have stopped. Jen would have started a fight with me and I'd just add it to the never-ending cascade of fuck-ups that form my identity. Not this time, though. The increase in my ambition from this treatment must still be going strong because I'm determined to see it through. August 5th, 2015, 8 o'clock p.m. There are four more holes in my head. I didn't think I'd be able to do it. Towards the end of the last one, I almost passed out. I'm glad I had the foresight to keep a few sugar packets nearby so I could regain the strength to finish up. Besides the issue with my dizziness, these four went better than the prior two. I used the left and right sides of my head this time, right above my ears. The skull was far thinner than on my forehead, so the vibration of the drill wasn't as excruciating. The blood loss was significantly greater though, which explains the desire to pass out. I have hand towels wrapped around my head so I won't get blood all over the place. Lucky for me, I'm a pretty quick clotter. 
<laughs> That's a funny word. <laughs> Clotter. <laughs> August 6th, 2015, 6.10 a.m. I slept sitting up and awoke to major pulsing, not just in the new holes, but in the old ones as well. A small problems developed with the second hole, though. I think it might be getting infected. The itching is unbearable and I think it might be starting to smell. I poured rubbing alcohol on all the sides and pressed it clean with towels so hopefully that'll stop whatever's breeding in there. My mood was pretty high, still not as good as the first day but much better than the days after. I've been thinking about Jen a lot. We had so many things in common. We loved talking about animals and used to go off on tangents where we'd discuss all the exotic ones we'd have when we were rich. Her favorite ones were rhinos. Mine were hippos. I used to tell her about the lake we'd have in our backyard where my pygmy hippo would play with her baby rhino. After they'd gotten tired out, we'd invite them up to the patio where they'd curl up next to one another while we gazed adoringly at them and at each other. I wonder how she'd feel knowing I've been doing all this work to better myself. She'd probably tell me to do more. August 7th, 2015, 12.35pm. I did more. All day yesterday, I drilled. I drilled and cut and pulled and peeled. I feel like I can take on the world. It's almost like the one time I did cocaine in college, but the effect has lasted far longer. I'll update again today if I have to, but for now, I'm going to work on some of my stories. August 9th, 2015, 9 o'clock a.m. Where have I been? Writing. Since the other day, I've gotten down a hundred pages of a story I never even knew I had in me. Reading it over is like I'm looking at the work of someone else. Someone far, far better. A stranger, I guess. On a slightly less pleasant note, there's definitely an infection in a few holes. One of them is weeping a gray liquid that smells terrible and all of them itch. When I rub them with a towel to try and scratch, they break open and start either bleeding or leaking clear fluid. I figure it's like a cold that has to run its course, but I'll be damned if it isn't becoming a problem nearly as bad as the depression was. August 10th, 2015, 7.40 a.m. I scratched in my sleep. I don't know what else to say other than it was bad. It's hard to tell from what, what I see in the mirror, but... I might have damaged some of my brain in the holes of my forehead and left side. A small piece is hanging by a thread that looks like a tiny blood vessel. I, I tried to tuck it back under the lip of skull, but I had to press pretty hard to do it and I'm worried I messed it up even worse. At least I saw a bear today. August 15th, 2015, 4.15pm. <laughs> more holes for me. Shaved my head. <laughs> no more hair. <laughs> Lots more holes. <laughs> Remember those wiffle balls from when we were kids? <laughs> One day, I'll tell Jen how I thought my head looked like a wiffle ball. She's always liked baseball and playing with my hair. My head infection was getting real bad before the bear came. Now, he licks my head while I sleep and keeps the gross stuff out. Jen loves bears. Bears and rhinos. <laughs> Every morning I have to clean under my fingernails a lot. P petting the bear gets them real dirty. It's nice. The, the bear shaved when I did so. I, I didn't have to feel like the odd man out. Those pulses in my head are nice and strong all the time. It feels good. <laughs> the bear licks me a lot when I sleep. <laughs> August 16th, 2015. 5,000. <laughs> Scratch the bear 
by his ears and he licks lots and lots. Ha <laughs> ha. Lots of licks means a lot less itching. Ha. <laughs> Jen, Jen, Jen would scratch my back when it was itchy. <laughs> One time she saw me trying to scratch between my shoulders using the door frame. <laughs> she called me a bear because that's what bears do when their back itches. <laughs> 60 holes. <laughs> Going to cut out the spaces in between. Make my bear proud, if Jen can't be. 